guys, this is an example video on computing Riemann sums with n subintervals, or you could think of this as trying to find the area um, of a particular shape using Riemann sums, however you, you kind of want to think about it. So if you made it here, I'm assuming that you're probably struggling a little bit with this. This is um, definitely a tough topic for sure. So in this example video, I will be actually suggesting times where you pause and work through certain parts. To me, that's like the key to really sit down and kind of get your hands dirty with the math. But if you feel like you just totally don't understand this topic, I have a, a I have a lesson in great detail about all of this where I really break down the formula and why everything works the way it does. So I highly recommend you check that out. Okay, so let's get started here. So before we get going, you really need to know kind of how sigma notation works. So these formulas that I'm showing you should be things that you're already used to using and you're not shy about using. If you don't know how to use this, I highly recommend you watch some of my other videos just on sigma notation. Also highly recommend that you have like this set of formulas in front of you while we're doing this exercise. Also, we need the general Riemann sum. So I'm using the one for right endpoints. So I would also recommend that you just have this handy. So if you need to write any of those down, feel free to pause the video, kind of scrub it as you need. And hey, while you're here, maybe you could consider liking this video, subscribing to my channel. That's what true VIPs do or sharing it with a friend. I am trying to grow this channel so every little bit helps. Okay, so let's go ahead now and we're going to find the re the formula for the Riemann sum with n sub intervals using right endpoints. And then we're going to take the limit as n goes to infinity and we're going to understand what that means. And it's going to be so much fun. And oh my god, I don't know why I like doing this so much, but it's, it's like a sickness, I swear. Okay, so here is the function. So we need to start by using the general Riemann sum. So this is how we get the party started. So I would recommend that first you kind of fill this part in um, and, and just fill in the formula to get started. So do that first, hit play when you're ready to see that. Okay, so I am going to set that up as well. That is like the worst looking sigma ever. So let's see, here's k equals one to n, f of, so let's see, this starts at zero. I don't fill in k, this will be one minus zero divided by n, all of that times one minus zero divided by m. So I want to simplify this as much as I can before I go any farther. So if I simplify this, this will really just be k over n and then this times 1 over m. Okay, so now we can really get the party going. So looking at this, so I, I really want to simplify this sum as much as possible. So I really need to kind of clear out anything I don't need. So the sum has everything to do with the k's. The n's we really just think of as constants. So this one over n, I'm going to just bring it out to the front for now. So this will be one over n, bring that out to the front. This is k equals one to n of f of k over m. Okay, so now where we're at, we have to evaluate this f of k over m. So basically now I have to plug in k over n into this function. So let's go ahead and do that. So this will be, let's see, one over n, k equals one over n, and then this is k over n cubed. Okay, so now what I would recommend that you do is try to work this out as, as far as you possibly can. Um, you know, you should be able to simplify this farther and use some of those formulas we talked about before. So I would recommend trying to do that before kind of going on. Hit play when you're ready. So if I sort this out, let's see, this becomes k cubed over n cubed. Now, looking at this, so you always have to kind of remind yourself, what are you actually trying to sum up? So your sum has everything to do with the k's. This n is really just a constant. So what I want to do is I just want to bring this n out. So I'm going to bring it out. It's going to have its uh, little friend out here, this other one over n. So we're just going to combine all those things together. I need to clear some space. Let me do that. Okay, so here I am. So now I'm going to bring this n to the third out. So like I've already got the one over n and now it's like say hello to my little friend one over n to the third I'm telling you guys there's something like wrong with me that I love doing this so much okay so there's how everything simplifies let me simplify this just even one step farther by multiplying now these n's together I didn't want to do too much just in case you want to see all of these fun fun details okay so now I can actually evaluate this sum and that's where I will use this formula here, I will just use that formula to kind of finish this off. So 
this will be 1 over n to the fourth times n, let's see, I'm having trouble writing, n times n plus 1, all of that divided by 2, and then all of that squared. Okay, so now we've gotten rid of the sum. So from here, it's kind of just like an algebra party, really. So you've got to kind of slog through all of the algebra to simplify this as much as possible. So I highly recommend you pause, work that all out, hit play when you're ready to move on. All right, so there's lots of different ways you could really do this. So let's see, I'm gonna go ahead and just square all of this. So this becomes n squared times n plus one squared over four. And now that will allow me to cancel out this n squared. This four will become a two. So now I've got n plus one, n plus one squared. So I'll just write that out so that I remember to FOIL it. This is going to be over 4n squared. So now I've got to FOIL all this good stuff out. So this becomes n squared plus 2n plus 1. All of that over 4n squared. Once again, I need more space. And now what I want to do is I want to break up this into pieces. So I've got this piece. I've got 2n over 4n squared. And then I've got 1 over 4n squared. And now I can simplify. So this will be 1 fourth plus 1 uh, over 2n plus 1 over 4n squared. Okay, so ta-da, there is my formula for just any amount of general um, n sub intervals. So what does this even mean? And kind of how do we get to the next step of this? So I always think it's really helpful to kind of have a little illustration to, to walk yourself through this argument. So here's my graph from zero to one of just x cubed. So what we're trying to do here is we're basically trying to find this area here. And so there's a couple different ways that you can think about this area. So if you're thinking about this from a Riemann sum standpoint, so basically what this formula is allowing us to do now is if you think about how a Riemann sum normally works, it's like, okay, I like find my four rectangles and then I have to actually figure out the area of these four rectangles and it's super clunky. Instead, what you can do is you can just plug four into this and now you don't even have to do all that work. And that's really handy, right? Because if I ask you for more than four rectangles, if I start getting to like eight or 16 or whatever, then it just becomes like a really arduous, laborious process to figure out this area, right? So now we've just got this formula. It's like, hey, just tell me how many subintervals you want. We're good to go. Now, here's the other part of this, like, and, and where we're going with this. So I've got all of these rectangles. So the best Riemann sum or the best area estimate I could get would be the one where I have the smallest rectangles possible. So if you start visualizing what that looks like, so it's like I start getting all of these rectangles to the point where it's like they are so close to each other that it basically just looks like I have filled in all of this area. So the width of these types of rectangles would be really as close to zero as possible, I guess. But the, the number of rectangles that we would ideally like to have in this situation so that I could figure out what is the area actually of the shape, I would like an infinite amount of rectangles. So I take this and I'm going to take the limit as n goes to infinity. So I say, okay, well, I want my infinite, I want my infinite subintervals and I'm just going to do it with this limit here. And now as I take this as n goes to infinity, this will go to zero, this will go to zero. And so then I'm just left with one over four. And lo and behold, if I have my infinite rectangles here, that is actually the area of this shape. It is one over four. So this is pretty amazing because we don't have a geometric formula to figure this out, but we figured it out just using rectangles, Riemann sums, limits. Well, actually we used a whole lot of math to figure this out. It wasn't exactly easy, but um, we do have kind of everything that we need for this now. Okay, so that wraps up this example. So if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments and um, thanks for watching.